Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Remember that show, Welcome Back, Cutter? <laughs> yes, we mentioned that last week. We're getting old. We are getting old. <laughs> I miss all the good old times from the, you know, when things were simple, not like today. But today, you know, hey, it's all got to be peeled away, all the layers to the illusions. Mm -hmm. I know. And even though a lot of those shows were really good and they felt really good, there was probably some indoctrination in there. Yeah, it was probably much darker than what we realized. And thank you guys for your support over on Patreon. We want to thank our three newest patrons. Hooray! Thank you to Tim, L Nick, and Lionel. You guys, <clears throat> along with everyone else, you guys help keep us lifted up and you help keep us going. Thank you. Yes, and I'm still debating where I'm going to put this one. This isn't a very, very, it's, it's a really, really important one. So yet another mass shooting. This shooting was in Lewiston, Maine. This is quoting at the moment. These numbers um, are subject to change, obviously. 22 dead, 60 injured. Uh, I've seen some other numbers not showing as many people injured. This, this is just another one in a long list. The amount of mass shootings has just been record-breaking. Uh, you know, this is just insanity. Now, Lewis, Lewiston, Maine is the second largest city in Maine. Yeah, it's only got 37,000 people. So, you know, Maine doesn't have a lot of big cities. Um, I was blessed as a kid to spend some time in Maine in the summers. Uh, it was, I mean, it is. It, it's one of the most beautiful states in the country. Absolutely. I mean, it's gorgeous. A little bit cold for our liking, but it's gorgeous. And you, this is not where you would expect this to happen. You know, Lewiston, Maine, by the way, is interesting. I was doing a little research uh, on Lewiston, Maine. And, you know, we don't know yet uh, if there's any particular uh, targets of interest to the shooter uh i haven't seen anything as far as you know, and maybe by the time we get this up because it does take us a while to process videos uh there'll be some new details as to who the victims were but you know it's interesting that there was a program bringing a lot of somali immigrants into this um, particular town and not just there but also the same program was sending people into um Georgia as well in Atlanta suburb and a couple other places you know again Lewiston Maine is is one of the more traditionally sleepier areas I would say uh, I mean gosh you know it, it is shocking but it really shouldn't be shocking this person is still on the loose active shooter shelter in place Local police were saying, you know, go home, stay home, lock yourself in, and be aware of anything that's unusual. So his his name is Robert Carr, date of birth 4-4-1983, uh, Bodoin, Maine. It, another thing interesting, too, is Lewiston, Maine. There's only one other uh, town city in the United States that has... Um, more people that speak French as their primary language, and that's in Louisiana, by the way. So they're, they're looking for him as a person of interest regarding this mass shooting incident. Started at a bar and grill restaurant, and then he had to drive down to spare time recreation uh, after that. He is a trained firearms instructor believed to be in the Army Reserve Station out of Seiko, Maine, according to law enforcement, recently reported mental health issues to include hearing voices and threats to shoot up National Guard base in Seiko, Maine. He was also reported to have been committed to mental health facility for two weeks during summer 2023 and was released. Known to be operating a main registration, 9246PD2013 white Subaru out black, Outback with a black bumper. Obviously armed and dangerous. You know, uh, former military, well, it's still military basically, right? One of the first things that comes to mind is obviously that hearing voices in the head. 
And we've talked about that so many times. When you, when you look at all the recent shootings, as this uh, person is pointing out, they're related to mental health. Now, of course, there is the agenda to take the guns away, but we have seen mass stabbings in, in other places, too. Yeah, you could do a lot more damage with a gun than you could with a knife. And yet you could do probably a lot more damage with RPGs. And yet there might be a whole bunch of people with RPGs, with all sorts of high-grade uh, military hardware in the U.S. with mental health issues that have come in illegally and may all be kind of turned on at one particular time. What would turn them on? As, as you see, you know, this person saying, why are we not talking about the mental health? All we're talking about is the guns. You know, it, it's because the mental health issue is second, secondary to an agenda. But you have to realize, too, when people go into the military, for one, you don't know what's put into your body because you are given a whole bunch of ouchies and what is some of the ouchies? What are, I should say, some of the ouchies? What's in there? Nanu, nanu. So that's my reference to Mork and Mindy going back to, yeah. you know, the 70s and 80s when life was sim simple. And, and we weren't really thinking about self-replicating nanu, nanu in people's bodies and the voice of God technology being heard in people's minds. You know, this is this is uh, very multi-layered, and when Mike told me about it, um, I I always look to see what the guides have to say about it. And you know, they're telling me <clears throat> there's multi multi layers to this. There's multi purposes to this. But I thought what the the picture they gave me was really curious. Um, but I sort of understand it, but I haven't seen this one before. They were showing me this uh, black hole. Um, this It's a black hole, but it's very dense. It's almost like I could stick my hand in there. And I'm taking that black hole to be where the voices are coming from, from this very, very dark place. But of course, we know automatically that there's already agendas for this. And there's many many things that i think we need to talk about you know when they when when we see a situation like this and they say okay you know this person was hearing voices in the head automatically people are going to think oh my god anyone else who hears voices they could be very problematic and that's a fair assumption you know when when people are saying things like this it's like are they are they okay enough and are they going to hear from their dog to go and do something horrible. So, I mean, we have to ask these questions because there is a responsibility when it comes to abilities. Now, abilities mixed with certain medications, I, I, I would say most all of them, and I don't want to hurt anyone because sometimes people need them. I completely understand that. But I do believe that these open more doors to that black area that I was talking about where information could come from there that's not necessarily yours. So it's like we do have to take responsibility for ourselves when we are on an awakening journey. If we awaken too fast, that can be problematic. That can cause all kinds of of issues, you know, even land people in the hospital if they're not ready for it. And sometimes when other medications are given, people wake up quicker than they're ready. It's almost like sometimes this can bypass the higher self. And if anything bypasses the higher self, that's a huge problem because it's your higher self, which is usually the, the safety gateway and higher self knows when you're ready to see, hear, and understand things dimensionally that is going to add that's going to add quality to your life. Obviously, this guy, he did, this is not an added quality to his life. I mean, this is a real distraction and this is horrible. But you can, you'll see the powers will take this and they will use it for many different things to create many laws, to create many fears. And honestly, we do have to sift through this stuff, but reasonably, we have to be reasonable about it. Now, once it hits the lawmakers, well, we already know what they're going to do with it. Yeah, and I just left this up purposely, you know, because you can see how how much this is talked about. You got people doing videos on YouTube from six years ago talking about this technology. It, it's a fact 
you know, this is real. Voice of God technology is totally real. Now, the thing I want to get across is that this technology was not necessarily developed by humans. It was kind of gifted to humans. It's been around a very, very long time. And, you know, this is a small PDF talking about this. Uh, again, it could make people think they're going crazy. I do think that I had one experience of this voice of God uh, in a prior location one night when I realized I left the uh, router on and I didn't turn my phone off. And then I had like this vision put in of cars rolling up to the house and and kind of like these men in black coming out to get you. And it, it was like they were talking to me and it felt very, very sterile. It felt like you're talking to the tax man. It felt like you were talking to some sort of emotionless government official is what it felt like. Now, that's not how the guides feel. The guides come across with feelings of blissful love and total um, acceptance and compassion. Nothing like this. And, you know, it's interesting too. Um, just do a search because you'll see there's different people talking about this. How can I tell? Um, because what's happening now is people are able to hear their guides. And at that same time, the government and the real power structure, because again, the government works for the extraterrestrials or the demons, if you want to label them demons, because they are demonic when you get down to it. Uh, that's who the government works for. They know when humanity is going to be waking up and getting impressions from their guides, from their higher selves. So, you know, they could mind hack and try to interfere with that and try to cause more chaos by getting you to not trust uh, those that you should trust and trust those that you shouldn't. This is part of that whole system that's in play. And this system goes on a long time. When you, when you think about Paul on the road to Damascus, all of a sudden, and I should say Saul on the road to Damascus, all of a sudden receiving this vision and you know, being given a vision of Yeshua Jesus, or at least that's how the story goes, and his conversion, you know, when you look at that, look at other ones. Constantine, pagan Roman emperor, gets a vision, shining light, you know, conquer in the sign of this, the cross. Huh, you know, you, you just see it. Moses and the burning bush, we've covered that as well. A voice that comes from nowhere. Where's that voice? Oh, well, it looks like the bush is burning. Well, a actually, again, that's a mistranslation. And in the Hebrew, it, it's, it's just that there's this strange light that's emanating um, this sound. We could see there's, there's technology in play, by the way. You know, Moses following the, the cloud during the day and a pillar of light at night. This is the same technology that's always been in play. When you see Joseph Smith, who, who was to be somebody that was going to lead uh, humanity, start to lead them out of the dark age, the system got to him and utilized him. The system knows who we are before we do often. They know what soul is entered what body <clears throat> because 3D and 4D are two sides of the same coin. And so they try to waylay them, and they try to, you know, bribe. And by the way, Joseph Smith, 33rd degree Mason, he again sees these, you know, vision of these angels, and they share different knowledge. Now, you know, again, there's going to be some knowledge that could be useful and esoteric uh, and have some benefit. And then at the same time, it's going to lead you down a path that is the control matrix path. When you see Travis Walton and, you know, his story, which is so typical of so many people, visions of this bright light, you might think everybody's having epileptic fits. But no, there really is technology in play, Ezekiel's wheel. Now, it's not really such a mystery uh, when you start looking at other sources. You look a little bit deeper and... You know, yeah, I, I've, I've seen people describe it as, well, simply it's a ship and there's different beings on the inside of the ship moving around. You got to remember, too, that a lot of the mythos of these beings are like half human, half like we have centaurs and 
we have uh, all sorts. We have griffins, which are sort of like lion type beings that are kind of birdish. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different beings out there that we've seen throughout the ages um, that maybe defy uh, logical explanation, but you got to realize we've been in a very dark age. We've been isolated from so many other beings. We're coming back out of that, and we're going to start to see all sorts of beings. If you can make it 10 years, you will see extraterrestrials out in the open, and, and it'll just be a given. And it probably won't be that long, really, uh, you know, because many people have seen them anyway. We've had many, many encounters with extraterrestrials of different sorts. And when you look to some of these paintings from like 1300, 1400, 1500, clearly showing like one that this one's taken from, this is obviously somebody in a ship because right next to it is angels. <laughs> They're different things. They are different things, you know, and again, the Vamanas, there's so much that's openly given in the Vamanas, talking about, in, in the Hindu holy books, they're talking about them as what they really are, ships by extraterrestrials. That's what they are. The Betty Andreasen affair, she saw all sorts of little greys. There's so many different types of greys. Some are not even biological at all. Uh, many are a portion biological and a portion... Uh, technological really when you uh, do look at the bigger picture with the Borg it is all about uh, that assimilation and the blending of technology with the organic and what did she see she saw some very very Nordic looking angel aliens uh -huh. exactly like may be attributed to Joseph Smith or or, or so many others, biblical times. You know, the, this has always been the case. The Nazis were given the technology for these Nazi bells uh, from Nordic-looking aliens, what we would call the fallen Pleiadians, Pleiadians that have been assimilated into the Borg. They've been conquered by the Draco. And so, you know, this is well known, and they, again, had all their occult symbolism and ritual and yet, you know, it's right there in front of our faces with the leadership of today. Sure, there was Operation pa Paperclip took in many of the top brains, and they didn't have to pay any sort of retribution for crimes against humanity and war crimes. No, they were given top positions like head of NASA, <laughs> you know. And here you have one of the President Bushes. Hey, there's a skull there. Yeah, it's supposed to be Geronimo's skull, skull and crossbones. Ah. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, Yale, obviously, Skull and Bones Society. It's this, these all serve the same powers. They all serve the same powers. When you look to what's on that Skull and Bones from Yale, it's 322. Why do they have 322? Well, Colossians 322 says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters just as you would obey your non-earthly masters. And then when we look to Genesis and the Elohim, the Mighty One, said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Now, lest he put forth his hand and live forever, we can't have that. So we will shorten man's lifespan by giving him poison water, poison food, poison frequencies all around him. And you have popes that came straight out and said, It served us well, this myth of Christ. Absolutely, the Vatican is is as much the center of darkness on the planet as anything is. This is the big reality. So when you see this shooter, uh, you know, it's completely part of the program that's been underway for thousands of years. So, I mean, there really is no difference. Um, people look to the Bible because they want to see what happened way back when. Well, there is no such thing as way back when. It's happening now. These are the same controllers in the Bible. They're doing this now. And the Bible gives several examples of what is going on. They give example after example after example after example. And, you know, I was just looking this up a, a little bit ago. Um, I, I, a NASA engineer set out to prove um, the 
the story about Ezekiel's, Ezekiel's wheel, that it was a technology. He set out to prove it wrong, but when he put everything together, he realized it was a spaceship. So he, he wrote a book about that. And I don't know how anyone could be studying the Bible and then not realize that this place was saturated with extraterrestrials at the same time uh, believing that we are the only ones here. You know, it's just... Um, takes a little bit of thought but i think after that thought then some absorption and then you can understand where we're at and that goes for muhammad too you know again it, it wasn't really the archangel gabriel no it wasn't the archangel gabriel it was again these these what we would call the fallen pleiadians that have been part of become part of the draconian anunnakian ajgian power structure that's on the planet and yet people will openly welcome them with open arms when they come here and they will see all sorts of signs and wonders. Ah, yes. Blessed are the peacemakers, as this kitty is showing. This kitty is a peacemaker, even though that one still wants a little trouble. <laughs> I know, isn't he cute? We can learn so much from our animals. We just need to watch and learn and they can help propel us into a higher place. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.